Welcome to the Dreamlands. We are back in the deserts of Karak for a 2v2 on the classic map, the Boneyard. And it looks like we are going to have the good old fashioned grudge match of Coalition versus Galcian. This is super cool. I love when we've got teams of all the same faction going up against each other. So this replay is going to be super cool because it features two old school veteran top tier players as well as two newer players. Um, new to the game as well as new to the channel, making their debut. Um, so let's get our bearings here. It looks like we are on... Okay, I'll call this East, East-West. Team 2 spawning on the East side of the map. It is going to be first up 10th Wave, uh, a player that really needs no introduction, a good friend of mine, as well as a top-tier Deserts of Karak player. Very, very good stuff, playing as the Coalition. Uh, his ally making his debut on the channel, a player that is very, very new onto the scene. Um, it is Garmalator. Uh, this player is totally new to Deserts of Karak. However, I do believe they are an ex-Masters level uh, StarCraft II player. So definitely somebody who has the chops for competitive RTS. Uh, and this player has been making some pretty big waves in the community currently. So I am very excited to see what this team can bring to the table. Uh, a tall order indeed for them, however, because their opponents spawning on the west side. First up, it is going to be Tren, a player that needs absolutely no introduction. You guys all know Tren. Very, very good player. Uh, somebody who has consistently been at the top of the game since launch. Uh, and his ally making her debut on the channel, it is going to be Yellhead. And they're both playing as the Galsians. So Yellhead is also fairly new uh, within the last couple of months. But this is a player that I have played with and against many times recently, and she has proven herself to be pretty damn solid. So, from what I can tell, both of these teams are pretty damn stacked and pretty evenly matched. And look at this, we've already got something that is very, very unusual. Both Garmalator and 10th Wave Team 2 are going for super aggressive openers. Um, not your standard support cruiser first, which is very much the meta for Coalition. They are both spamming out LAVs, streaming out across the map, and bringing their base runners forward. Now, this is something I know about Garmalator. He loves to do his uh, base runner turret rushes. This is kind of like what's made him famous lately. So he is bringing his base runner up, and looks like he's going to want to put down a turret on the high ground here. There he goes. Oh, bad positioning though. Oh, he popped the turret just on the backside of the dune, so that's not going to be able to fire on this location, which is what he wants. A little bit of a misclick there. It's pretty hard sometimes to exactly get the turret on the top of the dune, and it looks like uh, he just made a bit of a misplacement there, so uh, that's kind of a big deal for the... Uh, early game, that's 250 CU, and if you're going to spend it, you really need it to do some economic damage and to block mining on this location. It looks like Yellhead was trying to go for some early economy, um, and Garmalator was going to shut that down, but currently this is not even shooting, so he can, uh, Yellhead, she can, pardon me, go ahead and continue mining. Um, looks like she doesn't know that, though. And on the back of that, both Garm and 10th uh, Wave are going to look to secure a couple of early artifacts. Ten, uh, Tren on the back of this has gone for the double production cruiser opener uh, and the skimmer variety at that. Meanwhile, Yellhead looking to answer with assault ships, which is a good choice. So Tren, I assume, is going to go for heavy railguns on the back of this, whereas Yellhead probably assault ships into interceptors. At least that's what I assume. Those are the tech paths you want to follow. If you open skimmers or LAVs, you want to go with railguns, typically. Um, after that, especially in a team scenario where your opponent or your ally has gone for assault ships, then they can go ints and you can go rails. Looks like we're going to have some skirmishing here. Tren going to push off arms LAVs and get right on top of 10th Waves LAVs. This is a beautiful play from Tren. It's going to clean up a number of these LAVs. LAVs have the range advantage, but skimmers have the beefier hit points and damage, so if you can manage to use the terrain like Tren has and get on top of your opponent's LAVs, you will be in a good spot. On the back of that, looks like 10th is definitely going to dunk this first artifact, and the question is, can Garm dunk the second? 
Uh, looks like he wants to do some turret shenanigans. That's not a good place to place the turrets, though, because we have a ton of skimmers as well as assault ships right on top. Oh, and it looks like they are probably going to clean this up. Garm's LAVs are looking to support. So 10th dunks the first artifact for a 1-0 lead. And I don't think there's any way that Garm is going to make it out of here alive. He is going to lose the Space Runner for sure. Proceed to rally point. What is he up to? Oh, don't place a Desperation Turret. No, don't do it, man. He's going to place a Desperation Turret, which is a... Uh, I don't like that move, personally. I don't think it's a good idea. It is going to get one assault ship, but it's going to get immediately cleaned up, so that is not a good trade. There are too many units around here. A ton of skimmers from Tren, as well as assault ships from Yellhead. So that turret gets cleaned up. His base runner also gets cleaned up, and now these uh, LAVs from Garm are in a ton of trouble here. Tenth Wave still got these four LAVs out, doing a little bit of harassment. What's been going on on the back of this? Both Garmelator and... Um, 10th wave have capitalized on the fact that they pretty much have map control um, and have been putting some serious pressure on team one they both got their sport cruisers on the field so moved up to a full two base economy if you will aavs now on the field from 10th wave which have come out just in the nick of time he's going to need some armor upgrades though because this is a ton of skimmers and with the recent nerf to their armor uh, they can no longer just face roll a giant skimmer blob with like one or two LA uh, AAVs. Yellhead now up to two mining locations with two production cruisers on the field. And it looks like Tren is transitioning into railguns, I assume. No, more salvagers. So it looks like Tren wants to um, close that gap in terms of economy because right now Team 2 has a distinct economic advantage. 10th wave even putting down a turret. Man, so many turrets. Now this is a good position here on this turret. This is exactly how you want to place them. Whoa, hammer fuckery. Uh, right on the high ground there. That way it can cover this approach as well as this approach and it has that high ground bonus. I do believe the turrets get the high ground bonus. Correct me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> oh boy, we got strike fighters in the air. Tren looking to do a little bit of a flank on 10th Wave and force him back to his own territory. That was a good play. Uh, however, it was spotted by 10th Wave, and with six strike fighters in the air by the looks of it, these skimmers are getting absolutely wrecked. Ooh, punishing damage from those strike fighters. Now, on the back of that, they probably want to push again. Tren now at two resource locations. Uh, Yellhead at two, so closing that gap and all players now on two resource locations. Yellhead doing a little bit of a push. This is perfect. You don't want to get in too, too defensive of a mindset, especially when you've held off some early aggression. You want to push and counter and get your economy rolling. Can't let yourself get boxed in. Yellhead, a little bit of a miss micro here. There we go. Get those assault ships out of harm's way. We do have an armor upgrade for those. No upgrades for... Okay, one armor upgrade for the LAVs from Garm. No upgrades for his heavy vehicles. Railguns now on the back of that. So, transitioning into AAV Strike Fighter is 10th wave. Well, Garmelator goes into LAV Railgun. That's beautiful. Looks like it is going to mirror exactly what Yellhead and Tren are going to do. I anticipate Railguns from Tren and Interceptors from uh, Yellhead. Oh, double turrets up there. Holy smokes, however, 10th Wave was trying to get a second artifact, and that was cleaned up by all of these assault ships, which now have, or they do have that armor upgrade still. Hellhead even going up to three resourcing locations, beautiful. Looks like Arm is keeping pace, going up to three. Tren trying to set up his third, and some nice harassment coming out from 10th Wave. With these AAVs going to shut this down. Pick up a couple of salvagers as well for the trouble. Uh... Tren needs railguns on the field. There he goes. He starts producing them right away. Uh, Tenth needs to push right now. He sees that there are no railguns on the field. He needs to capitalize on this right now. Use this terrain to get right on top of here. If railguns pop out of here, smoke them, and then just push in here. He does have two armor upgrades. Uh, or part of me, that's one. One armor upgrade for the uh, AAVs. 
big push coming out from Garmalator, a pretty decent number of railguns um, versus Hellheads, skimmers, and assault ships. There we go, pushing right in here. Couple, ooh, tons of railguns here. Four heavy railguns now on the field. Some nice smoke, but look at that. This high ground position allows this heavy railgun apparently to shoot over the smoke. Oh, one, one AAV goes down. Strike fighters go in, wrong target. You want to target the heavy railguns, not the skimmers. There we go, strike fighters inbound from 10th wave. More AAV streaming out onto the map. 10th wave wants to again target the strike fighters onto the railguns. There he goes. A couple of volleys wasted onto the skimmers. Not a big deal. Oh, there we go. Oh, but interceptors in the sky from Yellhead. Beautiful counterplay. Going to start popping off those strike fighters left and right. Strike fighters are going to have to be recalled to the hangars. Beautiful play by Yellhead. I love that. And that's going to allow Trend the Breathing Room to continue mining off of two locations, trying to set up his third. He does have AA on the field now in the form of uh, missile ships. And these AAVs are going to see these heavy railguns, and they're going to have to get the hell out of there. Lots of AAVs, actually. Seven AAVs for 10th um, Wave. Backing up with a couple of railguns. 10th is on three bases. Garm is on three bases. Yell on three. Trend lagging a little bit on two. Uh, just looks like he's about to set up his third now, so pretty much all teams about to be even in terms of economy. Oh, Garm doing a beautiful thing. I just want to talk about this for a quick second here. This position on the map, if you're on the east spawn side, this position sucks a lot. Uh, that's my, that's the worst spawn in the map, in my opinion. This position sucks ass, uh, because it is very, very easy for your opponent. Railguns here, 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 here. All of these dunes and shut down not only your mining, but also your extraction zone pretty easily. So if you're in that position, you can't let that happen. It's happened to me a lot of times, uh, even recently too. It can be very hard. So Garmalator doing the right thing. He has got his carrier fully weaponized, backed up by a ton of railguns, as well as a massive swarm of LAVs. And he's just using his carrier as a blunt force weapon to dislodge Yellhead to allow him to take this position here with the train. This is exactly what you want to do. You cannot camp out here. I just wanted to talk about that real quick because it happens all too often in games. So Garmulator doing the right thing here. Pushing forward. Does He even has a cruise missile already. Holy smokes. Uh, Yellhead is in a lot of trouble here. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, looks like we have a good old-fashioned standoff between Trent, who has finally got his third up and running, and <clears throat> uh, Tenth Wave. What's going on? I want to keep my eyes open for a nuke. Oh god, there we go. A nuke flying across the field. Trend though with some quick reaction, gonna get most of his units out of the way. Ooh, but the damage is still severe. And right on the back of that 10th wave is going to push in. Beautiful play. Skimmers and heavy railguns versus skimmers and AAVs. A couple of railguns moving up to camp on this high ground position. Some nice positioning and some nice play from 10th wave here. The casualties on both sides are brutal though. I think 10th Wave is going to get the upper hand, though. This railgun is going to be pretty useful if it doesn't target skimmers. He wants to target these assault railguns, not the skimmers with that railgun. That's wasted shots. Use some smoke from your AAVs and get right on in there. Oh, but as it stands, beautiful play by Tren. His skimmers are going to get right on top of that railgun. That's toast. All of these AAVs are toast, and it looks like Tren is going to keep hold of all three of his resource locations. Meanwhile, we've got a giant push here from Garm, totally dislodging Yellhead. Beautiful flank coming out from Yellhead. Skimmers, though, going to try and clean up a bunch of these railguns, but this carrier's weapons are way, way too much, and this massive swarm of LAV is going to totally wreck Yell's forces. Pretty much all of Yell's forces have been decimated. On the back of that 10th wave is going to secure a second artifact, bringing that score to 2 nothing. We do have some uh, heavy railguns from Yellhead. I don't think that's a good choice, personally. Um... If you are going uh, Strike Fighter, or pardon me, Assault Ship Interceptor, and you're facing off against something like this on a map like this, pretty much go for Siege Cruiser tech. Um, Hell has been on three bases long enough to have that tech. And Assault Ships will counter these LAVs. And so you don't have to worry about those too, too much. Whereas if you build Railguns, that's a huge threat. 
Uh, so is this carrier with this much power in weapons. Oh, bombers, though. Bombers is the choice in tech, which is pretty good. Not a bad choice. I would like to see siege cruisers coming out from Yellhead. I think that would be beautiful. It can do a ton of hurt. Oh, another cruise missile. Right onto Yell's main. Ooh, savage damage. Missed the mark with both of those production cruisers surviving, but however, it cleaned up most of the... Actually, it only cleaned up four salvagers. I don't think that was a very good cruise missile, personally. No offense to Garm, but if you're going to target it, target it in the middle, right on the RU, so it cleans up all that stuff. Garm forced off, so pretty nice hold from Yell. Again, in a position like this, I would like to see siege cruisers. You can camp them behind this and just punish these huge blobs as well as these carriers. But as it stands, we do have two bombers and three interceptors in the hangars. Looks like I missed a little bit of combat on the other side of the map. Tenth wave streaming out across the map. Uh, and with a massive, massive macro advantage over Trent at the moment. Um, what I would like to see Tenth is not stream out like this. Don't put your units into combat piecemeal. Um, well, four missile batteries on the field. That is going to shut down that bomber pretty damn hard. Um, these skimmers coming in just trying to do a little bit of damage. Going to almost eat a couple of mortars, but some nice dodges coming out from Trend. Trend's third gets shut down yet again by 10th. Too many units here. However, 10th wave uh, is making one crucial mistake, and that's streaming out his units piecemeal onto the map. These units are going to eat a ton of barrages as well as some railgun fire. Some nice smoke, though, to cover the retreat. However, beautiful positioning from Trend's railguns. Look at this, using that high ground position as well as this open uh, kind of path of fire here, giving his railguns some nice crossfire as well as some nice open fields to use their range to punish these units. Tenth Wave made a crucial mistake there, in my opinion, streaming his units out like that. What you want to do is just Give a couple of moments for your units to uh, congregate and get yourself a nice high ground position before you push. Tenth did mitigate most of that damage though, thankfully. However, that allowed Trend to beef up all of his units here. He's even got some nice AA with the missile ship, so these strike fighters, mostly uh, their damage is going to be mitigated and Tenth is going to be pushed back. This is going to allow Trend to take this high ground position here that Tenth should have taken. Holy smokes, this game is just full of action. A giant flank coming out from Garmelator's LAVs. This is empty soul style right here. Oh, this is so bad. Brutal. Gonna just clean up a ton of salvages, probably. Uh, no, not. It's going to eat a ton of Gaussian weapon fire and get absolutely just wrecked. A couple of beautifully placed assault ships. Yell is gonna hold this masterfully. Beautiful defense here from Yell again, but Arm is pushing up behind this with his carrier and some nice railguns on a high ground, backed up by AA. Savage composition here. What a brutal game this is. This game is fucking fantastic. Oh, <laughs> some big mortars. I'm gonna clean up all of these uh, salvagers. Yell has got some serious power in weapons, and so does Garm, though. These carriers are just going toe to toe. Neither player able to break the other. Oh, but a cruise missile again. Where's it going to go? Right on nothing. A giant waste, actually. All right, so two cruise missiles with minimal damage. Um, but now Garm is going to push in here with his carrier, and Yellhead is less than half health with her carrier. Two of her production cruisers have been cleaned up. All of her units have been destroyed. Yell is in full retreat at this point. Tent on the other side of the map, Tren has been pushing Tent Wave all the way back to his carrier. However, he is going to have to recall all of his forces because Garm is here with a fully weaponized coalition carrier, which is a terrifying sight to behold. Armed with cruise missile, Yellhead is almost dead, and Tren has almost no power on his carrier, so he's in a lot of shit, actually, at the moment. I'm going to recall all of his forces. We do have armor upgrades for the mail guns. Thankfully, we probably have... Um, yeah, foolishly, I still haven't uh, installed updated uh, replay mod from Majir. I do apologize for that. I keep forgetting. Uh, I will try and do that for the next replay, however, so I can't check the tech on any of these uh, carriers, sadly, but I imagine we would have um, railgun heavy calibration. Looks like we are going to have... Whoa, we are going to have a giant battle here with Tren and Yellhead going to try and sandwich... 
Um, Garm. Oh boy, but all of these LAVs gonna come out for the flank and start cleaning up these railguns. That is bad news for Tren. It's the only thing that could potentially kill this carrier. Some nice barrages, though, gonna force those LAVs back. Beautiful micro from Tren. Garm is actually taking a fair bit of damage on his carrier as well. What's going on over here? Oh, a big push from uh, 10th Wave. Some bombers going to start putting the hurt on these AAVs, though, as well as this railgun war here. Oh, looks like we are going to have a beautiful railgun war on the top of the dune. 10th Wave bringing his carrier up. Railguns onto the high ground. Going to start trading blows with Trent's railguns on the opposite dune here. What a sight to behold. Oh man, I don't think there's anything that Tren and Yell can do to come back from this. However, valiantly fought, valiantly held through most of the game by Yellhead. She did very, very good. Cruise missile inbound. Oh, right on top of Yell's carrier. Beautiful. That's the money cruise missile right there. Looks like at this point in the game, all of Yellhead's forces have been cleaned up. All of Tren's forces have been cleaned up. We have got two carriers and a ton of railguns from both Garmelator and. 10th wave. I think the clock is ticking for Team 1 here. We've got three artifacts to nothing, about to be four nothing, and well, that's not going to matter too much because Yellhead is about to die. There goes Yellhead's carrier in a fantastic explosion. And on the other side of the map, it is the unstoppable march of Armalator, his fully weaponized carrier backed up by a massive number of railguns, even a couple of sport cruisers in here, three of them to heal up that carrier. Tren at this point probably can't really do anything. He's about to get double teamed, one in each end. We'll just watch the final battle of this game play out in beautiful cinematic glory. I hope you guys enjoyed this game. I certainly did. This game was absolutely magnificent. Some top-level plays from some very good players. If you guys enjoyed it, smash that thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, subscribe for more Deserts of Karak and Homeworld content, as well as other shit. And, uh, yeah. Trans Carrier is about to go down in a fantastic explosion. So let me know what you think, guys, and I hope you enjoy this video. Kaboom, and I will see you for the next video.